Spider-Man PS4 is easily the best superhero game I've ever played. I'm sorry Arkham Games, I love you, I really did not you, I love you a lot, but Spider-Man, honestly, it just takes the cake for me. Of course, this is already coming from a biased place since Spider-Man is my favourite superhero of all time, and so that already scores some bonus points from me, but this is based on my own opinion, so you can make up your own mind based on your preferences. Spider-Man PS4 tells the story of an older Peter Parker. No, not that old. Jesus Christ. This Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for eight years. It's the oldest version of Peter we've seen outside of the comics, and they absolutely nail it. This was clearly the best choice for the game. They aren't weighed down by an origin story or by introducing characters we've already seen plenty of times. They can just drop you into this world. This is very similar to how the Arkham series did it. It drops you into this already established world with characters like Batman and the Joker that we already know and tells a story using those characters. And Spider-Man PS4 doing that was the best narrative decision they could have made. From the opening shot, I noticed how detailed they made this game. The camera opens up with the shot of a spider hanging from a web and continues to pan around Peter's room, symbolically and subtly telling the origin story that we all know so well. Bit by a spider, Uncle Ben dies, with great power comes great responsibility, you know the drill. Unless you've only seen the amazing Spider-Man movies, in, wh in which case, you, you don't know the drill, you know, you know this drill. But your father lived by a philosophy, a principle really. He believed that, that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. Please. <laughs> Then straight away, you're thrust into this story. They establish straight away, this is Spider-Man. From the way Peter is rushing to get his suit on while quickly grabbing breakfast, to his notice for late rent sliding under his door, they set up with just a few shots what it is to live the life of Spider-Man, having to keep up being Peter Parker, whilst also having to save an entire city, and it's just done so well. Then right away, you're thrown into gameplay, swinging through the streets of Manhattan, attaching new webs to buildings and zipping around. It's super easy to pick up, and you you instantly feel like an experienced Spider-Man. You feel like the Spider-Man from the movies of your childhood or the comics you read, and it gives you this insane feeling of nostalgia and joy that you are the one controlling this. You are the one who is Spider-Man, and it's just done so well. The swinging from the get-go feels satisfying and fun, but as you progress through the game, you unlock more abilities and swing speed upgrades to make the swinging even better. And as you play a lot more and become more skilled, you're going to be able to better maneuver and swing a lot faster. So for new players or for casual players, you can pick up and have a blast. But for players who want to take that extra step, there's also a lot of cool things you can pull off once you put some more time into it. If I had to be critical of the swing in any way, for the sake of improvement in a sequel, I'd suggest more variation in animations and potentially some more player control over tricks. Spider-Man 2 allowed for a lot of tricks, whereas this game has only four that you can use, which is fine, but maybe some more in a sequel and some more control from the player allowing you to pull off some crazier moves would have been awesome. But that being said, the swing as it stands is incredible in Spider-Man and you can find yourself literally swinging around doing random events for hours because the traversal is just so damn enjoyable. Talking of swinging around doing random events, the other core pillar they nail is the combat. The speed and movement of Spider-Man is captured so well in the combat system, with a lot of emphasis being on taking enemies to the air and stringing your attacks together. The combat system works to make you feel like you are Spider-Man, not to mention the constant quips which never really fall flat and always give me a good chuckle or at least a smile whilst playing. The combat system could be likened to something like the Batman games, but it isn't just a straight carbon copy such as something like Shadow of Mordor. This game has its own identity and trades out the typical counters of a Batman game to dodges which is far more spider-like. It has the takedowns once you've built up enough focus by hitting enemies or using gadgets, of which there are plenty, and I found the gadgets to be super useful whilst fighting enemies, and you can really pull off some amazing looking moves. Stringing all of these different styles and moves together can be super fun to do, and I found different moves worked for different enemies, and you really had to utilize your moveset to most effectively take down enemies, which I really loved. 
With regards to both swinging and combat, as well as gadgets, as you progress you'll earn XP and you'll be able to use that XP along with tokens you get from side quests to level up your gadgets and unlock more skills to become the best Spider-Man you can be. On top of this, there are a fuck ton of suits. Granted, a lot of them look like... this. Well, I'm just not wearing that, am I? But I admire the collection, and these are crafted with tokens also. With the main pillars of traversal and combat down to a T, it allows for the side activities to feel fun and rewarding. Even the simplest things like I mentioned, such as swinging around, completing random events, can be fun as hell based on the fact that the core gameplay elements are nailed. With regards to the side quests and activities, Spider-Man builds them around the superb gameplay they've built. They make the side activities around swinging, combat, stealth, or a mixture of the three which makes it incredibly fun. I didn't mention stealth earlier but it's very easy to get a grasp of and it feels satisfying picking off enemies one by one. All of the different side tasks have different reasons for existing in the open world from challenges involving your swinging and fighting to side stories for civilians to puzzle solving to collectible items and so much more. It really utilizes the best parts of Spider-Man's gameplay to create some incredibly fun side activities. Just swinging around collecting different backpacks is a blast, seeing what the city has to offer and getting small insights into Pete's life over the past eight years in the process. It's a great balance and something I greatly admire. Talking of mission structure, the way the main story is set out is very good. There's a good mixture of linear missions that you'd expect from a single player story driven game, but also you get story specific missions out in the open world too to mix things up. A lot of open world games will make their story missions a cutscene at the beginning, a few side quests string together in the middle and a cutscene at the end. Spider-Man however creates unique missions for the story that have great character moments and a very unique structure. Not to mention the amazing set pieces you'll find in the linear missions. There are some truly incredible moments. I can't say too much without risking potential spoilers, but there's some absolutely brilliant moments to rival set pieces from games even like Uncharted. Some truly magnificent scenes. And on top of the action you have the narrative, the characters and the acting. All of which are fantastic. The characters are nailed, they feel like the ones we know and love, but in their own universe, and their interactions are always a delight. From Spider-Man and Mary Jane, to Miles and Aunt May, and villains like Shocker, Rhino, Scorpion, and Mr. Negative, and so on, there's a diverse array of characters, and they all have well-written dialogue with brilliant performances. And Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker or Spider-Man is standout. There are some truly amazing scenes in that game that make you feel so many different emotions. And a lot of that is due to his performance as Spidey. And I have to say, it's probably in my top five best performances in all of video games. And I honestly wasn't expecting to say that. Of course, this is a Spider-Man story in every way. And so you aren't just playing as Spider-Man, but as Peter too. Very early on, it establishes that Peter has priorities as well, and over the course of the game you get to play as Peter trying to juggle being Spider-Man whilst also being Peter Parker. Whether that's working in a lab or helping out at the feast shelter, there's plenty of little environments for Peter to explore and interact with. There's also mini games as Peter in which you have to solve particular science things. I know that's not exactly the technical term, but what really is this? They're fun the first few times, but once you're on like the 10th, they start to get old and annoying pretty quickly, especially in comparison to the gameplay as Spider-Man. On top of that, there are other playable characters too in Mary Jane and Miles Morales, who are fine. I mean, you just kind of walk around an area, sneak around a bit, it's slow, and it sometimes messes up with the pacing. The story elements are cool, but it honestly makes replaying the game sometimes a bit of a chore because, well, these only exist to convey some story elements. In terms of just gameplay, they're they're pretty fucking boring. Towards the end, things get a bit more interesting, with MJ's missions giving us some fun things to do and some very, very interesting story points to explore, but beyond that, it just seems forced and unnecessary to have these mundane stealth segments as other characters in a Spider-Man game. The photo mode is also sick. I, I like it a lot. This game has simply no right to look this high quality. I mean, look at that detail. Anyway. The story takes you to so many different places emotionally and narratively. It starts in one way and ends up an entirely different way. There are very clear narrative arcs and character arcs that all feel so well paid off at the end and they do so well to emotionally invest you in these characters and in this world. They do all this very subtly. In most games, I can tell when something is set up for a payoff or when something is happening because it'll be used later in the story. But in Spider-Man, there wasn't many times that I noticed this. So when the moment hit me, it hit me really well. The setups aren't in your face so that you know there'll be a payoff. They just happen. And when it pays off, it gives you that euphoric feeling of, oh my God, of course they're doing this and I love it. It's little things like that that makes the storytelling far superior to a lot of games on the market. Also, it easily sets up that this Spider-Man game is the start 
start of a larger Spider-Man story, as well as potentially being part of a larger Marvel world. Only time will tell. If I had to criticise anything, because I guess I have to, this is a review of sorts after all, let me just list them real quick. Like I said before, more control over swinging and some more variation in tricks would be great. Side missions could be done more like the Arkham games with side quest lines for specific famous villains could add a lot to the world. A lot of the suits, although very detailed, just look silly and not many of them I'd actually consider wearing in the story. Next time I'd love to focus on suits that just look badass as opposed to whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> As much as I love the different times of day, a day and night cycle could be cool. I get why they didn't have one, and honestly, I don't mind it much at all, but it could be cool in a sequel. Not enough fucking puddles. I'm kidding, there's plenty. I'm solid puddle game, guys. That's, that's good shit. That's good. some good puddle. Okay, we're done. We're done with this puddle. All in all, this game delivered everything I'd hoped for, and maybe just a smidge more that I hadn't even considered. This has really set the bar higher for superhero games, in my opinion, and really shows what can be done if you have passion, talent, and an amazing company like Sony Interactive Entertainment backing you. Spider-Man is another brilliant PlayStation 4 exclusive to add to the already extensive and incredible collection of games you can only find on the PlayStation 4, and I cannot wait to see what Insomniac has up their sleeve for a sequel. Well done guys, and thank you for an unforgettable experience. He didn't think it was his responsibility to be here to tell me this himself. Oh come on, how dare you? How dare I? How dare you? Hey.